My friends, there is no doubt that friends play an extraordinary important role in our lives, especially in times of sickness and moments of crisis. We are forever indebted to them for the support that is given us on these crucial occasions when we are down on our luck and everything seems to be going against us. I'm sure that many of you who join us en masse by TV today from your homes know that only too well. Where would we be without family and friends and caregivers? Let us never forget to thank them. And there is no questioning the loyalty of the friends of the paralytic in today's Gospel. When they could not get through the doorway to bring the man to Jesus, they climbed the outside stairway that would be a feature of a Palestinian home. Then incredibly, they began stripping through the roof, taking back the tile, making an opening large enough to lower the paralytic on his stretcher in front of Jesus. I hope the insurance policy covered the damage. And meanwhile, meanwhile Jesus was in the room below teaching the people. But can you imagine the confusion, the noise, the distraction as the mortar and other material came crashing in on top of them? As a preacher, I know only too well how easy it can be to be distracted from the task. A big yawn from the woman in the second pew can do it. But imagine the roof coming in. Anyway, Jesus took it all in his stride and greets the intruders, praising their faith and assuring them that they are forgiven. In olden days, when a person got sick, the priest was the first one called for, then maybe the doctor. Nowadays, the, uh, the opposite is more likely. But for Christians, both the doctor and priest have a role to play in the care of the sick. That's not to imply that the body is the doctor's province and the soul the priest's. To say that would be to condemn both doctor and priest to see but one half of the reality. When the paralyzed man arrived in front of Jesus, Jesus saw at once the man was in need, in need of physical healing. But he also saw something else. The man was in need of spiritual healing too, and he decided to begin there. Following the Second Vatican Council, the texts of all the seven sacraments were revised to more faithfully reflect the ministry of Jesus. The new rite of the sacrament of the sick made a number of changes. Significantly, the name of the sacrament was changed. Before the Council, this sacrament was referred to as extreme unction or last rites. Do you remember that? These names suggested that this was a sacrament given to those who were about to die. And instead of joyfully announcing the healing presence of God to the sick person or to his or her family, the sacrament was administered to the dying with great fear and trepidation. Family members frequently delayed the sacrament until the last possible moment, and on occasion, time ran out, and the loved one died before it was possible to celebrate it. And this often compounded the guilt and grief of the family. Anyone with serious illness physical or psychological, is a candidate for the sacrament of the sick. This includes those who are weak because of age. The sacrament can also be celebrated with those preparing for non-elective surgery. The prayer recognizes the person's appeal for health in body and soul. It asks that their hope and faith will bring comfort to them and that they in turn will be examples to others, both of God's patient, both of patient suffering and confidence in God's loving care. And the sacrament should be celebrated as soon as possible on the outset of the illness and, and so that the, the healing power of God can sustain the person throughout. The priests in your parishes are more than happy to celebrate this sacrament with you in church, at home, the parish office, or wherever. The celebration can be a support and consolation
to other family members and friends who care and worry about you. That's why the rite suggests that when possible, it be celebrated in the prayerful presence of family members and carers. The sacrament of the sick is administered by a priest who anoints the person with sacred oil that has been blessed by the bishop during Holy Week. The sacrament remits sin, including serious sin, when the person is unconscious or unable to celebrate the sacrament of penance. The sacrament of the sick does not always confer a cure, but it continually holds out the promise of healing for the person who receives it and for the family who cares for him or her. It reassures us all of God's sustaining presence in times of suffering and pain. It reminds us that we are all called to share the fullness of God's life forever. In today's Gospel, Jesus offers spiritual and physical healing. This great gift is also offered to you and to me.